Dividing decimals. All notes, examples, and practice problems need to be recorded in your math notebook. Before we begin, there are three vocabulary words we need to be familiar with. Divisor, dividend, and quotient. Divisor is the number you're dividing by in a division problem. So with the problem 12 and 2 tenths divided by 2 hundredths, 2 hundredths is your divisor. The dividend is the number to be divided in a division problem. That's your 12 and 2 tenths. That's the dividend. The quotient is the result when one number is divided by another number. This is the answer to a division problem. So with the problem 12 and 2 tenths divided by 2 hundredths, 610 is the quotient. Steps to solving a division problem dealing with decimals. First is you move the decimal in the divisor to the right until it is a whole number. So with the problem 3 and 6 tenths divided by 1 and 2 tenths, I take my divisor and move the decimal to the right, making 12 the new whole number. I'm going to repeat the same step with my div dividend. However many places I move my decimal in my divisor is the same number I move it in my dividend. So I'm going to move it one place, making it 36. If the problem had been given to you already put into the form like this, then you would still do the same process. You would take the decimal in your divisor, move it to make it a whole number, so that's a 12, and then do the same thing to the dividend, moving the decimal, and then putting the decimal up into the, divide, into the quotient. Third step is to rewrite the problem so that it has, it looks better, 36 divided by 12. The fourth step is to write the dividend under the division sign and the divisor in front. Final fifth step, you move the decimal up into the dividend in the quotient. So when the, deci the decimal is in your quotient, in, in, sorry, in your dividend, it goes up into the quotient so you don't forget to add it there. And that was the step I was telling you about right here. So when you moved it there to put it up in your quotient. Step six is divide as usual. You may need to add zeros. So when I'm dividing 36 divided by 12, I get three. And I have no left up, none left over. However, if I had a remainder, I could have added more zeros to continue the process. Step seven is to check your work. Multiply the divisor by the quotient. My divisor was 12, my quotient was three. And when I multiply that, it equals 36. And that's what your dividend was. Let's do one together. 20 and 9 tenths divided by 3 and 8 tenths. First step is to take your divisor and move the decimal to make it a whole number. So I move it here, and we have 38. And then we do the same thing to our dividend, 20 and 9 tenths. Move it one place, making it 209 holes. Again, if it had already been written for you, in this format, I would have followed the same procedure, moving the decimal place once here, moving it once here. So with our problem, 38 divided into 209. I'm going to go ahead and add a decimal because I, just in case I have remainders. And now I can divide. 38 goes into two, uh, 20. 0 times 38 goes into 209. I'm going to estimate to around 38 to 40. And I know that 40 goes into 200 four times, oh sorry, five times. So I'm going to go over here and find out what the math is. So I know that 38 times 5 is 190. I'm going to subtract. And I have 19 remainder. Bring down my zero, 190 divided by 38. Again, using my estimation skills, I'm rounding 38 to 40. And I know that, oh, look at there, it goes in there five times. So 38 goes into 190 five times, and that is the same value as 
as we just did, and that equals zero. So I don't need any more zeros because I've already got nothing as a remainder. So my final answer is five and five tenths. But I need to check my work to make sure I did my math correctly. So I'm gonna go over here, do 5.5, so my quotient times my divisor is 38. We'll do a quick lesson on multiplying decimals while we're at it. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 5 is 40. More, 4 more is 44. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 5 is 15. And one more, 16. So when I add this up, And then the lesson on multiplying decimals is we don't bring our decimal down. We see how many numbers are after the place of the decimal, and I have one value after the decimal. So I have to move my decimal one place in, having an answer of 209, which is what I was looking for. But that's another day. So now you have some practice problems. You've got four computational problems here. Work needs to be shown in the book, in your notebook. And then you have three word problems, again, showing your work in your notebook. See you tomorrow.